I have clicked on today's tropical tibet for Thursday, July 11th, and here in the Atlantic, uh, we are mainly watching the remnants of a tropical storm Chantal, uh, which has now degenerated, and uh, a couple of pieces here are moving both north and south of Cuba. The main piece that we're watching is the one that moved north of Cuba. We talked about this whole area has the potential to see some, corda, some sort of a redevelopment of an area of low pressure in here. And right now we're watching her remnant wave axis. And uh, the piece north of Cuba right now, uh, if we're going to look for it, we have to look at the low level, low level winds. We can see sort of northwesterly, or sorry, northeasterly winds southwest of Andros Island right here. But if you look just south of Andros Island before the thunderstorms go up, the winds look east-southeast based on the low-level clouds. And this suggests that the wave axis is right here, just south of Andros Island. And uh, this is an interesting position for it to be in. All of the convection is off here to the east, most of it. Some of it's developing right now over the axis. But if we look at the GFS and what it was showing valid at near this time, uh, this is valid at 0z now you can see it had the vorticity maximum just south of Andros Island uh, where it's kind of at right now but then if you look at the forecast and take this forward you can see it takes the vort max straight north here and then eventually ends up in uh, South Carolina here uh, by 60 hours uh, as a land falling wave it doesn't actually develop it uh, but that's the path it takes same with the Canadian if you see where it has it we'll go to 0z which is right now it actually has it too far north here it actually starts feeding back the mid-level center uh, northeast in the northeastern Bahamas and then it brings that up as a storm into North Carolina. So these models are pretty far north here and most of the solutions have it going into the Carolinas uh, within the next two days. But if we look at the visible satellite again, again, uh, the wave center is right here. Now there is a mid-level center right here, uh, but right now there's no real sign that any kind of surface reflection is developing despite the convection. And uh, this continues to move mostly towards the west over here. And you can see that the ridge does have an edge over here with the winds turning out of the south east of the Florida coastline. But it looks like the ridge kind of extends a little bit closer to the Florida coastline than perhaps the models were seeing. And so I think this little wave axis here is going to be coming up a little bit farther west than the models have it, perhaps even over the Florida Peninsula here and maybe up towards Georgia. It uh, may even stay inland over the Florida Peninsula the way things are going right now. Um, so I think this area may be more likely to see this wave um, instead of the Carolinas. If it was over here, things would be better. You notice that the, the flow is now out of the south uh, east of Florida. And when you get this strung out meridional flow, which means south to north, it's generally kind of hard to get nice focused convergence in here. You can see the thunderstorms trying to go off, but most of the convection is off here to the east. And the reason for that is because the winds are still out of the east southeast here uh, with the high pressure to the north creating additional convergence in this region. So if this wave axis wasn't racing out ahead, uh, we'd probably getting a little be getting a little bit more development out here. But as it stands, only the mid-level center is out here. It doesn't look particularly likely to develop to the surface anytime soon, so development chances there are low. And I think this guy, uh, he's going to be running pretty close to land here, so it's going to be tough uh, to get a tropical storm again out of this. And pressures are getting a little bit high in here at about 1,015, 1,016 millibars. So I think overall development chances for this are decreasing, uh, though convection will continue going off with it. And a lot of rain is going to be spread up here through Florida into Georgia and perhaps the Carolinas as well. And uh, we will see how that develops. We will have to keep an eye on it regardless. Now there is another piece to Chantal. Uh, which is down here. Uh, she went uh, in two pieces. One went north of Cuba, one is south of Cuba. If we look at the winds here, you can see, look at the Cayman Islands. The winds are light out of the northeast, northeast here, but there's strong southeasterly trade winds coming into Jamaica. So you can see that there's clearly a sharp tropical wave axis moving west of Jamaica and towards the Cayman Islands. And you can see convection's been going off with it today over the water, and that is moving westward. And uh, this cannot be forgotten about. This is going to be coming westward into a more favorable environment. You can see right now that there are upper level cirrus clouds and milky white here coming out of the west. This is indicating wind shear due to an upper level ridge to the south and this upper trough that's currently laying across the Gulf of Mexico, shearing things from the west. But as this tropical wave gets closer to the Yucatan and eventually over the Yucatan into the western Gulf of Mexico, upper level winds will become lighter and it may have a chance to develop. 
because again, uh, we're talking about this upper level trough over the eastern United States, which is cutting off into an upper low at its base here during the next couple of days. And this upper low is going to be retrograding westward uh, into Texas, Oklahoma, and the western Gulf. And out ahead of this tropical wave, that's going to be a divergent environment. So it may have a chance to do a little something in here. Currently there is no model support for development, uh, but it's a situation to watch anyway. It will likely generate rainfall for the Yucatan regardless. And uh, the other region that we may have to watch over the next couple of days is this low that's sitting way out here in the Central Atlantic. And this is going to be backing west-southwestward towards the Bahamas and the Florida Peninsula over the next few days. And remember, uh, we had a low like this just recently, and that's actually still right here just south of Miami. Very weak now, almost gone because of the warmth aloft due to the thunderstorms inside of it. And this one never developed. But when you have these lows here, this one has a better reflection at the surface as well. When they come over warm water for a days like this. It's already over 28 degrees Celsius water up here. It's going to be moving even uh, over even warmer water down here. And when, when you have those things tracking over warm water, they should be watched carefully. It will eventually make it into the Gulf of Mexico as well. And you can see the European here has a nice little uh, wave coming towards Florida. It's got a nice surface reflection, a little bit better than the last one. You can see the separation between these two isobars here is a uh, pretty large, indicating that despite uh, the large scale flow here, it has a nice uh, depression in the surface wind field. So this will be something to watch in the Gulf Stream off of Florida and in the Bahamas for potential development in a couple of days, and that will have to be monitored. Beyond that, we also have tropical waves coming west of the Cape Verde Islands here. This will be coming west again. This is the one that GFS was developing days ago, has since dropped it, and none of the models really developed this one. It looks like it gets caught up in the fast trade wind flow, just like Chantal, a little bit too far north. Uh, the way the waves are going to be developing in July here is if they can develop near or south of 10 north, just south of 10 north in this thin belt here. If they can be far enough south of the trade wind belt, that's where we might get development. And indeed, the latest run of the GFS actually had a nice southerly runner uh, coming towards Barbados in about seven days, and uh, that has not been consistent on the models, uh, so we will have to see whether that comes about. But we will have to watch these waves again as they come west during the next several days and the next couple of weeks, as the pattern, as we've talked about, will remain favorable out here east of the Caribbean with the MJO in the position it is and the strength of the waves that are coming off Africa. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.